If you are the Flames right now, you're Brad Tree Living. Things are not going great. And I'm all out of ideas. <laughs> you We've done nothing. <laughs> so here's the thing. What we understand is extension talks have started with Johnny Gaudreau. Johnny Gaudreau made $6.5 million last year, okay? He is eligible because I believe this is the last year where he makes 6.5, which is the deal he signed with Berkey back in the day. And now he wants an extension. You know Johnny's never really performed that well in the playoffs, but you're going to have to pay him more than... Kachuk, who makes north of seven. Do you do it? The fl- Okay. What if the Flames are good? Because last episode, like I was looking at the individual players in the team and, and, and I was like, what, wait a sec. Why are they shitty? Why is this team shitty? I know. What if, what if I know. I they it. hate Kachuk that much? That they're shitty? What if he's that much of a... Like, what if the locker room is that torn that they address one thing and they're right back to being fine? It's possible. Is it? Is it possible? You could, Is it as simple as you commit to Gaudreau, you commit to Monaghan, and they go right back to being the cardiac kids and you probably... I mean, you're not going to get nothing from Matthew Kachuk. They're right? trying to move on from Monaghan, by the way. They are. They're saying... Well, then I don't know what the fuck they'll, they'll find anybody that will like anybody that will take Monahan at this point is what they're saying. Can I like, as can, in, the the whole conversation we have about GMs being not the smartest people like this conversation just proves it. Like if if you're Brad for living, you say, no, Johnny Goudreau, you're under contract for another year. I don't have to negotiate or sign you to anything right now. You have to go out and play for the team and show me what you got in 2021, 22, and we'll evaluate you at the trade deadline. I'm going to ship you away for a whole bunch of stuff if you're not performing. And Johnny says, okay, I'll leave you in UFA, or you can ship me away at the trade deadline. Yeah, and I'd rather do that. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, now, and I say, thanks. It's been great negotiating. Go out there and play. play here's, how, here's how GMs clearly think. They're so afraid of making mistakes that they're not focused on making the right choices. And here's, I'm not saying it's right, but Jesse, to that point, a GM would look at that and go, well, what if he has a great season? Yeah, then I'll leave him the money. That's, that'd be awesome. And he refuses to negotiate with us uh, during the season. So we have to wait till the season's over. He has a great season. And then we're fucked. Now we got to play him nine. Okay. Uh, no, I have to pay a great player the money he's worth. Oh, no. F- Flames, Flames miss the playoffs next year. What happens? Everybody's gone. Everybody's gone, including not Brad. Brad. Brad's not never gone. Oh, Brad's no. gone. Is Brad the, would be gone. No, Mm-mm. <laughs> I think Brad. What, on what his happened last this play. season? I the mean, the obvious solution life. is to fire the GM who's accomplished nothing. He, that's, how long, that's the he's been there solution. For, he's been there for over a decade. Yeah, that's the obvious solution, and they won't do it. Um, so I don't know what to tell you. They're gonna fire Tre Living if they don't make it. Remember no. this guy that hired Bill Peters that j- just fell over himself to steal Bill Peters from the Carolina Hurricanes. Like, I forgot. About come that. on. Like, remember, do you remember the puff pieces written about that? Calgary got their man. And we were at the time like, he stunk in Carolina. Why is, forget, forget the racism that we found out later. Forget the racism. We can't really. Well, but he was never good. And he the was never kick, good. kicking dudes in Carolina, that one often gets forgotten about. <laughs> Right, he kicked dudes. Yes, seven years, seven years, two months, fourteen days is how long Brad Living has been general manager of the Calgary Flames. He's not if going had, anywhere. Yeah, no, you're right. If I, by the way, if I had a guaranteed contract for over seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and a coach kicked me, I would throw him on the ice. Like I am shocked that these guys got away with that. It's insane. It's insane. But anyway, the the because uh, it you, happened to Sam Mitchell. Like wasn't wasn't he wrestling? Let's with, not like, get into Carter. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But you're right. The 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 thing is, Jesse's got it. Seven years he's been there. Like, what do you do at this point? Anything. We haven't done anything, and we're all out of ideas. It's <laughs> like <laughs> like what it, you you went out. It's oh, we need a goalie. You went out and you got the goalie. Markstrom had a good year. Four Canadian teams made the playoffs this year because they had to. How many deserved it? I'd say the Leafs deserved it. They played well enough in the regular season to deserve it. 
How many deserved it? Montreal didn't deserve it. Don't, don't, don't at me. You know that. I'm, I'm mad enough at the Leafs that I'm comfortable saying zero. Are you really? <laughs> I think based on the regular season performance, they had made the playoffs. Who'd I think any have? rational hockey fan would see that. Come on. You're not being rational. Adam Wild, rational. Neither are they. Neither are they. You're holding on to a core that hasn't done shit for you. That's irrational. Mm-hmm. Listen, if we're saying Dubas is going to be up, then you got to think Tree Living is. No. How many times do you think, how many playoff rounds has Brad Tree Living won as GM as Calgary Flames? Zero. Canadian teams are two different brands of bad. Maybe one. No, there's the bad that, there's the bad that makes change too often, and there's the bad that makes it too seldomly. And we're Benning and Shevel Day Off, basically one and two. Benning who moves too much, Shevel Day Off who never does or didn't used to. Didn't used to. Right. Well, and I, I, I'm I'm more talking about dudes who get hired and fired. I don't know. It's it's just a curious thing. Like I think I'm curious to see, and and the general manager think is, well, we we better resign. Look, look at what the Leafs did with Travis Dermott. The more I think about that contract, the more I dislike it. The more I try not to. I have to tell you, the Leafs. We should have more of a microscope on that Travis Dermott contract. And no disrespect to Travis Dermott, who seems like a great guy. But by every measurable statistic, advanced or otherwise, Travis Dermott was down last year. Whoa. And they dumped Allery. Well, hey, go to arbitration with him. Do you think most teams have a microscope on contracts where the guy makes 1.5 a year? They do not. Oh, how come? What, what is it with the Leafs? Oh, the fans are just too hard on them. Yeah. No, there's a lot of us, and we love the team. We love it, the team more than you could possibly imagine. Yeah, but it's still just numbers, man. Like what what is like what is it about what is unique about the Leafs that makes a 1.5 million dollar deal so important? What is it, Steve? I don't know. I, I, I just can't put my finger on it. Could oh, it be I could, 50 I could something here's here. a failure? No. Here, give me 11 minutes. You know what? Give me 33. And and I bet I could come up with an answer for you. I'll give you 10.9893 root minutes. Oh, he doesn't make that anymore. Oh, sorry. Because there was some weird, poorly explained glitch in the salary cap that boosted Matthews and Marner's contracts for some... What? God for sake. Yeah, Marner makes yeah. more than that now, and so does Matthews. Marner's 10.903. And what about Matthews? Matthews is 11.640250. Why? Those are the numbers. Yeah, so he used to make 3.4, uh, 11.34, something, something, and then now he's at 6.4. Yeah, so why? Happened. When did this happen? This know, happened some... all last season. Their, their yeah. cap hits were higher. Yeah, some weird cap thing. You know, I don't know. I don't hey. know what kicked in, like bonus wise or cap numbers, LTI or wise or whatever it is. But it went up slightly. A couple. It is bizarre. Couple tens. Of I don't know. Dollars. I don't know how I'm gonna get my love for these guys back. I don't. I you don't. will. You will. I they start know. winning. You will. I, listen, I'm gonna cheer for all of them next year. But if I'm a Flames fan, I'm feeling the same way as I do as a Leaf fan, which is you've done nothing. What do you expect to change? If Kachuk is back, Kadro is back, Monahan's back. The Flames should be better. I mean, I picked them to make the playoffs. They have the talent. But if they could stop hating each other for a minute, they might be able to put it together and actually accomplish something on the ice. Yeah, like I, I, uh, that team at very least should have made the, the Canadian playoffs. Yes. Yes, that's an t- extremely talented team. G- good right. goaltending, good defense, good leadership, good goal scoring, and some toughness. I don't, I don't get it. I don't know why you can't put that together. I really don't. Well, they didn't have good goaltending. Marshall Mark- didn't have a good year at all. Yeah. Like a so, 900, you know? But, and then a lot of people will say, well, what's the system in front of them? Like, did any flame have a good year? Right. Yeah, none of and them that's my point. It, and not, not to excuse Markstrom. $6 million goaltender should be able to perform, outperform a bad team. You're getting, at that point, you're getting paid to be the better, one of the better players on the team. You're right, Jesse. But I'm just... Like they, the, the pieces are there. I don't think anybody looked at Calgary this year and went, it's gotta be fucking Markstrom. There it is. Right. What about the first six years of the seven year run that you're on? Hmm. They got like the bones of a really, really good competitive hockey team. It's just not, it's not coming together. You know, I'm trying to find out what the Pacific division is going to be next year. 
Um, I can't seem to find it because Seattle's going to be there and Arizona's getting punted to the mm-hmm. central. The more I think about it, the more uh, Duncan Keith is going to be the trade that makes us all look like idiots and the Oilers are going to do great and he's going to put up like 40 points. Yeah, and it's going to be even, hilarious. Dude, Tyson Berry put up 40 million points. Is anybody like, man, let's give an eight-year deal to Tyson Berry? Uh, yeah, the Oilers. Steve, do you want me to read the divisions to you? Yes, please. Uh, the Pacific is Anaheim, Calgary, Edmonton, LA, San Jose, Seattle, Vancouver, Vegas. And then the central is Arizona, Chicago, Colorado, Dallas, Minnesota, Nashville, St. Louis, Winnipeg. You know what? Good for LA for going, you know what? We're going to try to get competitive now because that division sucks. <laughs> what do you mean? You Save got, the teams again. You got the juggernaut Golden Knights and then a bunch Shut of... Shut up, Jesse. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you got, you got Vegas, shit. Vancouver, Seattle, San Jose... L.A., Edmonton, Calgary, Anaheim. That division stinks. <laughs> Holy shit. That's real bad. Yeah. That's real bad. The In some of the models I've seen, Seattle's not even projected to come last. Like, bro, they don't have any players. Like, how, how aren't they finishing last? They have, like, one dude from the Q sign. Oh, man. Fascinating. 